Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. Let's let's start off with Jordan and Curtis. This scene just <laughs> for so many reasons irked the living life out of me. From the time that this man, you know, practically walked on in there like he owned the place. Okay, just kind of just popping open the door and sitting down, just start ordering people to do stuff. And then when Jordan gets there, Jordan can clearly see that this guy is in a bad spot. So she starts to sit down with him and start drinking and stuff. Get into some memory lane stuff. And then Jordan is sitting there telling Curtis to forgive Portia. And... Curtis says something. Curtis says something that for a very long time, people are going to be super annoyed about. And even Curtis said it. Curtis is like, if I forgive Portia for her lies, the way I treated you, I'll be a hypocrite. And that is 100% true. Then Jordan says something that was just completely and utterly ass backwards, and it still is not making any sense to me. Well, there's a difference because I didn't want I didn't want us to break up or whatever. Like I didn't want us to end our you know to end our marriage. And Curtis, <laughs> like the pos, the egotistical jackass that he is, was like. Well, why didn't you fight harder for us? Are you kidding? I sat there and I replayed that like five times because I wanted to make sure that that made sense to me. The ego in this man, they even say something like that is just some. Um, wow. <laughs> wow is all I got to say. So, they get to talking, drinking more, and at some point, they're about to kiss. And I've said this in my live streams, I've said this in my videos, that apparently, the writers just feel that the goddess known as Jordan can't do any better than Curtis Asper. That's something, the guy who treated her like garbage. You about to just sit there and lock licks with him? Like, are you... Okay. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, for so many reasons, this, this scene just vexed the living hell out of me. They don't kiss, but... Still. <sighs> Katrina comes in. And she finds out that Esme is not there living with Laura and Spencer. And she's not too happy about it. But she also wanted her out of jail, so, you know, it is what it is. The rest of the scene seems like it just goes nowhere. You know, there's some talks with Laura and Esme, and they're talking about the baby, and she talks about how she wants to do better, and how... She didn't know she can even trust them because of Heather and everything like that. It, it, it really just goes nowhere. And the same thing with Spencer and Trina. Unless you are a fan of Spencer and Trina, and I know the name for it. I'm not going to say it because I'm just not going to say it. Um, but unless you're a fan of, of these two characters, this is a scene that doesn't really go anywhere. They're about to kiss, but then Esme comes in there, and then Spencer makes up some awkward lie about how, you know, PCU classes and how he could sit there and take the baby there because of daycare or something like that. And, you know, she's just like, no, nah, I'm cool. I can, I, I got this. You know, I'm a, I'm a mother. I'm, I'm good. And it just really goes nowhere. So scene just seems like it's just, I don't want to sit there and say it's pointless, but it doesn't really move the storyline anywhere. So again, unless you're a fan of those characters, yeah. Um, 
So, surprise, 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 no one, Gregory's sick, which surprises no one. After about 40-something minutes of Alexis Nithya nagging and keep assuming that this man is an alcoholic, um, he tells her the truth. Tells her the truth, and of course, she tries to tell him how to handle it as far as, oh, why why doesn't your sons not know at this time the third? And I'm like, bro, you are treating this man like y'all been married for years and y'all got four kids. Y'all are friends at best. And even right now, I'm, they, they even use the word friendship is, um, you know, kind of muddied up at best. I get that she wants to help him. See, the thing is, Alexa's heart is in the right place. How she's going about it, accusing this man of being an alcoholic for 40-something minutes, and then trying to pressure him into, oh, I can sit there and help you. I can get you. I can get this. I can, I can, you know, be there for you. You shouldn't be alone. You shouldn't be handling this alone. It's like, this man has been an adult for 50 something years. Okay. Let him rock. Let him decide on how he's going to sit there and handle this situation. If he needs you, he'll be there for you. He, he, you'll be there for Take a couple of steps back and breathe. So he walks off and she just stands there with that stupid look on her face. And you know at this point, Alexa's is going to do something to let Ben and Chase know about his diagnosis. Even though that's not what he wants and that's not his wishes, she's going to do it by accident because she's an idiot. So there's that. <clears throat> Another thing that's not a surprise is that Liz, Liz is going to keep her job. Liz is not fired, and for some odd reason, and I don't, I can't be the only person that just feels kind of irked that she didn't lose her job. And not only did she not lose her job, and I think this is the whole scene that just really kind of irks me a little bit. Not only did she not lose her job, but after everything was said and done, one of the one of the um one of the guys from the committee comes out and praises Liz for you know giving medical care to a woman that was pregnant and stuff like that, and you know it's really just really just praising her. The reason why this scene is just kind of bad in a lot of ways. Is that I feel like this would be more of a Liz dream sequence. Where it's like, you know, the night before she has a dream and like one of the dreams comes up that she's pretty much kind of praised and celebrated for not only practically breaking a law and just, you know, aiding and abetting, but getting her job and being praised by so many people. Because that's literally what wound up happening. And after that, Violet came in and they all just practically lived ever after, happily ever after, going to go get spaghetti with Cam and the boys and everyone else. That's literally how that scene went. I don't know. I just, I feel like I can't be the only person that's just like, really? Like, really? Not even a, not even a suspension period or anything like that. Just, I mean, granted, we all knew that she was going to get her job back because let's be honest, it was either that or painting and... Well, that woman hasn't painted or talked about painting in, well, years. So we knew it was not going to be that. So, yeah, not exactly surprising right there. Hmm. There are some scenes that just seems like they're somewhat pointless, like the scene with Marshall and um, Portia. Seems like it just... Seems pretty pointless. They just talk more about his diagnosis and how, it, you know, it was the wrong diagnosis. And, you know, Marshall's just like, so were they just guessing or whatever? It seemed like they didn't really take their jobs too seriously. And Porsche just kind of points out that, you know, medicine and stuff like that was very different back then. And kind of gives some sort of explanation to why they might have misdiagnosed him. And also talks more about Curtis. And the whole scenes, again, just goes nowhere. Um, 
you know, in a lot of ways, if they move this storyline, what I one one path where I think they're going to move the storyline is that we're going to be pulled right back into two years ago, where he is kind of going along and getting along with Portia, but starting to migrate towards Jordan. Right back where we started with Jordan and him migrating towards Portia, except for it's just going in reverse. Which, um, I gotta say, I feel like the GH fans deserve better than that, but, um, yeah. Now, let's get into this whole Cody and Sasha and Maxie scene, because Maxie Smith did talk about the, the nurse's ball, because that's pretty much all she's been doing for the past, I don't know, however long she's been talking about it for. Cody comes in there, and Cody makes, Cody makes Gladys uncomfortable. Okay, talking about, oh yeah, I remember you, and this, that, and the third, and yeah, so you have to support and everything, and you know, it, he makes it seem like he's about to sit there and expose Portia. For her, her, you know, gambling and stuff like that. The poker, the poker games. He's like, oh yeah, it was, it was ladies night. Yeah, that's what it was. And she's like, oh, okay. And then Maxie drags him out of there to, talks about pretty much how she wants him to be Magic Mike. I know they call it Magic Milo, but come on, let's, let's be honest. That's, that's literally what it is. And there's there's a part in there that just makes me laugh. And I don't know if it's an ironic laugh or, or whatever laugh you want to sit there and call it. But she's trying to convince him, oh yeah, we want to sit there and do this whole, you know, coyote ugly thing, but except for it's boys that's doing it or whatever. And it's for a good cause and it's not expl it's what does she say? It's not exploiting men. Oh, it's not. So getting him to dance half naked, that's 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 not exploding men. Oh no no no, it's it's for it's for charity. It's for charity, it's for a good cause. Oh, okay. Well, when you put it that way, there's no way that could possibly be exploiting men. I mean, can you imagine it forced to reverse? Head would roll. That would definitely be Exploiting women. No, 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 no. It's a guy who's on stage. Nah, it's for charity. So I found that to be particularly funny. And um, I found it to be a bunch of other things. But I'm not going to really get on that high horse. And I think we all know where I'm going. So let's just move on. Um, so Sasha's not there talking to Gladys. And she wants to buy her dress to, you know, go to the, the nurse's bar. Apparently... Guardianships or whatever is supposed to actually get paid, and for some odd reason, Gladys didn't get paid, which I don't really know why. But she wants to do something nice. She's like, oh, I'm going to buy you a dress and everything like that. You know, Gladys is feeling kind of guilty. There's one point, and I think this is towards the end of the scene. Miss Wu, Texas, Gladys is like, hey, yo, you know, your old poker buddies or whatever is going to be, you know, they're coming in town or whatever, they're going to be sent to gambling. Do you want in? And, you know, she has that look on her face like, you know, like she really wants to, she really wants to gamble, but she knows it's wrong. Knows it's wrong, but she really wants to gamble. So, that's going to be interesting. And, of course, at some point, they kind of play musical chairs, I guess. And Cody tells Gladys, I mean, Cody tells Sasha, you know, as far as trusting Gladys, it's like, listen, trust, but verify. And of course, on the other side, you got Max and Smith there talking about, oh, you know, don't you, you know, practically think that um, Sasha and, and Cody would be like a cute couple or whatever, or something along those lines. And she's like, no. Like she said it like, like kind of angrily a little bit too, like, no. But of course, that's when she got that text about, you know, playing poker with, you know, with the gang. So, you know, I would want, I would one day want to see one of those poker matches. I really would. 
Because I feel like it, I feel like it'll be a really great scene. Like seriously, can, and this is something else that kind of. And I'm just now thinking about this. When Gladys is losing a lot of money, right? It would have been interesting to see those games, to see the look on her face, the the fear, the embarrassment, and how she's going to sit there and tell Sasha the guilt. You know, I feel like that was kind of the problem when Miss Wu was sitting there saying, oh, yeah, you lost a lot of money. It's like, yeah, it's bad because, you know, Miss Wu was saying it and there's a certain level of intimidation, but it would have been really interesting watching the process, watching at least one of those games where she lost a ton of money. Listen, when you start throwing actual numbers you know, even before that, like when she was like, oh, it's X amount of dollars. It was like, whoa, that's crazy. Like, I felt that. So it would have been really interesting to watch her lose and be like, yep, you're down like $4,000 or whatever. Like, $4,000? What was you doing? Like, you got to sit there and wonder, like, did you even know how to play poker in the first place? The same, this opportunity. Yeah, I feel like that's pretty much about it. I can't really think of anything else that happened throughout this episode. But, like usual, if I missed anything, um, come to the live stream tonight. 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We sent there talking about all the soaps, including General Hospital. Um, so, yeah. That being said, I'm going to go. I want to thank you for watching. Be safe. And I will see you in the next video.